Is this thing on? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Tom's on holiday. But robbers, by the time you listen to this, he'll be back to leave his house alone. Tom's on holiday, which means that I, Lucas Gertby, are editing the podcast today. And that means I get to do the announcement. Does he do the beginning intro? Does he stop doing that? I don't know. Here we go. Episode 149. 149. Yeah, uh, and then it just says enjoy or something, doesn't he? Enjoy. Oh, but wait till the end because an anonymous fan has written us a little fan fiction short story which I'll narrate at the end of the show. Vision podcast, the podcast where every two weeks, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and somebody else called Tom Lawrenson, we talk about a load of books that were seven of them in a series called Harry Potter. And uh, yeah, we talk about other stuff as well, it isn't just that. This week, we're on episode 149, chapter 14 of book six Felix Felicis. And uh, felicitations to you, Tom. Hello. Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? you wearing, he's wearing his orange shirt today, that means he's in a good mood. Yeah, exactly. You can always tell how I'm feeling by the shirt. I mean, before I was in a bad mood and I put my red shirt on, angry. But now I've got me his mellow orange shirt on. Put his brown <laughs> shirt on because he needed the toilet. Exactly. Well, I swapped my shirt. Just got the pod off. Yeah, exactly. Bit of poo humour. Um, <laughs> I don't have to swap my shirts because my other one was too sweaty. I've been building cupboards all morning. Uh, I managed you three. You build cupboards. I'm... Last last time I spoke to you, <laughs> building cupboards, never-ending yeah. cupboard house. This flat is to become. <laughs> oh, in Germany, you have to take the cupboards with you, dear. Yes. There can be no cupboards <laughs> left in a room. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, everything else is done now. It's the kitchen that I'm doing now. But I can't put it together. I just do the cupboards and then Martina's dad comes and puts it on the wall. Because I can't do that, but I'm not very good. So I build them and then he pieces the puzzle together. But I'm getting quite handy with that. I could, you know, I might be able to do that in the future, an IKEA builder. You know, the people that come around and do it for you. Yeah, do yeah. that then. Hmm. Well, I've had to hurry up because uh, I told you I had a job interview. I've gone and got the job. Whee! <laughs> <laughs> oh, the bees are aching in him. <laughs> oh, Mr. Moneybags, that'll be me. <laughs> Go on then, what do you want? Say, What's your wage? What's your salary? Nah, I'm not saying that, but it's in euros, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> he brags, he comes on the pod and he immediately brags, I'm in the money, I'm in the money, well how much money are you making? I'm not saying, then why tease us? Yeah. Why does he tease us listeners? <laughs> Some listeners like being teased, don't you? Mm. Yeah, but I've got me a job. I'm going to be working in uh, the accounting department of a, of a school, of a language school. Bloody, I can't keep him away from the schools. Education <laughs> is, is this lad's forte. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I start on Monday. So before I was like, well, you know, I'll do a cupboard one day, a little stool the next. I've got all the time in the world. And now I start work on Monday, so I was up at seven, <laughs> putting cupboards together. After 
Crack on sharpish. Mr Cupboard. Yeah, Mr Cupboard, chill. Come on, children, let's go see Mr Cupboard. <laughs> hey. That's good, you can yes, start please, straight Daddy. away, isn't it? Yeah, it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think because September's obviously the busiest year for schools, because it's the start of the school year. So they need all hands on deck. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, great. start on Monday. Will you get a qualification by the end of it? No, I don't know about that. But I might learn about it while I'm doing it. I'll figure it all out. experience. Exactly. That's important, isn't it? Because when I was applying, everybody wanted experience. Even for the jobs that said junior accountant or beginning accountant. They're like, well, if baby you want to be a junior accountant. accountant. Yeah, baby accountant. And like, if you want to be a baby accountant, you need two years experience. I was like, well, how am I going to do that if I'm a baby? So I don't know. Yeah. Mm. But they took a chance on me, in the words of Abba. And uh, now I've got myself a job. They How's changed their mind. Been? You were first in line. If they're still free, they took a chance on me. Exactly. They took a chance on me. <laughs> Have you had a nice week, Chuck? Uh, I've been trying to get more steps in. So I've been, I went on a crazy journey. I walked from Stockport to Charlton, which took like three hours, I think. Hang on, you're trying to get more steps in. The last time you told me you were doing 22,000 a day, you're trying to get more than that well, going? I was trying, but some days I only got 7,000, so I thought I had to top oh. it up by getting loads yeah. in. Yeah. So I did like 30, So how many steps 000. was it? Oof. Yeah. 35,000. Yeah. And did you, yeah. did you go there and back? Yeah, walked there and back. Now I thought, okay, I need a reason for going to Chorlton. So what I did, I booked myself in a massage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, because I'm going to be going on a long walk soon. I was like, time to get my body, you know, massaged. So my sister Alice recommended this Thai massage place, yeah. Yeah. So book, book it in online. Yeah, pay. I turn up. <laughs> Right, you love this. Because I've been walking for like three hours. Yes. Yeah. And it was it was in the pouring rain as well. Once I decide I'm going to do yeah. something, I do it. I just, I was like, yeah. well, I've decided I'm going to do that now. A lot of people, they change their minds. Are we still going to do that thing? No, I've changed my mind now. Why well, have you changed your mind? No, I've changed my mind. I don't want to do it anymore. I yeah. always do something, even if I don't want to do it. I bloody do it. So I set off. It's pouring rain. I'm like, oh, this is horrible. And I'm wearing my raincoat, and it's a hot day as well, and so I'm sweating under the raincoat, the rain's pouring on me, I'm like, oh, it's horrible. And so I've got a hole in my shoe, yeah? Oh, yeah. These aren't your new shoes, are they? No, I thought, for the, for the walk, I'll wear my old shoes. And so yeah. I bought some old shoes. I got some old shoes, and they had holes in the bottom, both of them, because I wear shoes, aren't they? I will wear them out. <laughs> so both my feet were wet. Yeah. And I get to the uh, place and I'm like, oh, bloody hell, I need to make sure I dry my feet when I get in the room somehow. I go in the room and this lady's going to me, you ready yet? You ready yet? I'm like, no, no, not just yet. And she's coming in the room. I'm like, I'm not ready yet. And then she's like, oh, you know, she's seen it all before. She don't care. So I get into me, uh, <laughs> I get into me box of shorts. And then yeah. I'm like, I forget to dry the feet because she's rushing me. And so yeah. I, lay, <laughs> I lay face down on this massage table. Yeah. And I put the towel yeah. over me to hide me modesty. My <laughs> underpants, I guess. But it's my modesty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't look at them. I mean, don't look at them. And I'm like, oof, not drying my feet. And then, without asking, I think she takes one look at the feet, she gets a towel out and starts drying my feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you didn't have to bring your own mud and oil, sir. <laughs> we do that. <laughs> no, it's from walking here with holes in my shoes. Oh. And so... I didn't realise I, I was massaging Fagin. 
She, I've got my hair down, and um, yeah, she, uh, she's like, no, I need to put your hair in a bobble, and she's looking at all my hair, and she, and she's got my long hair, and she goes, oh, pretty lady, pretty lady, she calls me pretty lady. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> and I thought that was quite good. And I'm laughing along going, yeah, yeah, I'm a pretty lady, aren't I? And she was like, no, it's not funny if you're in on the joke. I was like, oh, fair enough. Um, but she calls me a pretty lady. She puts me there in a bubble. And then, um, I think I'm face down. So to, all, to my knowledge, she's on all fours on the back. Yeah, that's what I'd be assuming as well. Right. <laughs> also, there's bars on the ceiling, so I think at some point she's holding the bars and just walking around my back, and I'm like, yeah, whatever, yeah. she's fine. <laughs> but I've got, from this mad walk I've done, I've developed a bit of a sore ankle, and yeah. when you, sometimes when something hurts, it's like, you think people are being drawn to it magnetically, she won't leave my ankle alone, she's like yeah. battering this ankle of mine. She's like knocking it about. She's yeah. <laughs> she's twisting it in angles it doesn't want to go. And I'm like, maybe this is in my head. I'm like, maybe this is good for the ankle, but I don't want to say anything because I'm thinking, yeah. oh, you know, maybe maybe this will. I don't know. I don't want to hurt her feelings. I don't want to think I'm soft because I want it to be tough on other areas of me. Uh, and so I'll leave it there. So she's massaging me, she's dried my feet, right? One point, right, I've never had this before, I've been to massages before. At one point, she grabs, sometimes they, they tuck the towel into your underpants, yeah, into your boxer shorts, into right. your plastic, so the towel doesn't move anywhere. Yeah. She fucking pulls, she grabs my boxer shorts and she reveals my whole ass. She gets my whole <laughs> ass out. <laughs> And yeah. I've got my face in this hole at the table and I'm smirking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, what is going to happen now? Why yeah. Why does the <laughs> arse need to be out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why is the arse out? Like they say, <laughs> leave your boxer shorts on. And then she's whipping the whole arse out. She's like, yeah. getting the arse out. Yeah. Then... <laughs> A bit yeah. of time goes by, and I'm thinking, she's not touched the arse. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, she does a bit of forearm massaging on the arse. She's, like, working yeah. her forearm on the arse. And she's just, like, you know, both cheeks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Arse stays out for a long time. Mm. <laughs> Maybe she's just having a nice not look. I don't know, it's not touched, it's not being touched. I'm like, it's getting cold. So eventually, she just like, she recovers it. And I'm like, okay, you've recovered the arse. Okay. Um, and then, uh, where does she go from there? Well, she's battering me, a bit more on the ankle. She's cracking all my fingers. She's pulling all my... Uh, 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 yeah. Uh, pulling them all out of the sockets till they pop. And when they won't pop, Ooh. she keeps trying with them. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know the art to tell her. I'm like, that one's not got a pop. Not all, a finger some, sometimes can not always pop. Or it might have been no, popped no. earlier on. She does all my toes. <clears throat> I'm in agony. And yeah. then she starts doing... My hair, I'm like, I didn't think the hair needed a massage. But she's pulling at my hairline, and I'm like, careful yeah. with that. <laughs> careful, I'm a pretty lady. And then I start grimacing a bit. But also, let me tell you this, there's a bit yeah. in the massage where finally it's starting to feel good because she's doing my shoulders, yeah. And yeah. when she was making me feel uh, not nice, I was trying to give nothing. But now she was, she was doing my shoulders <laughs> and it was feeling nice. I was like, I need to signal to her that I'm enjoying this. But the yeah. issue was, you can't signal in like, you 
you can't be too enthusiastic, otherwise they might think you're a seedy bloke. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You can't be going. You can't be going like. Oh. <laughs> you can't be giving it that. <laughs> yeah. You can't be giving it that. It's not that kind of place, sir. You can't be going. Mm. <laughs> so I'm having to like figure out a way to subtly encourage it. Well, I suppose I could have gone. Oh, that's nice. More of that, please. Could have said that, and that would have been. That yeah. would have been the end of it. Instead, yeah. but, I was going yeah. like, I was going like, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> yum, yum. Mmm. <laughs> and then um, she sits me up. Yeah. And then she makes me put, she puts me arms behind me. Yeah. And she yeah. goes, you, you go, she goes, you hold my arms. And we're holding each other's arms. And she puts her feet in my back. And she starts pulling, like, stretch me all out. <laughs> she starts stretching yeah. me all out. And then she yeah. starts laughing. She starts laughing her head off. I go, what? She goes, you are too long. You're too long. <laughs> I'm too long. <laughs> Body's too yeah. long. And then oh. she does this thing. She's like, she's like, oh, she's punching me in the back of the head. She's punching in my back. Bastard. And then um, she says, uh, well done. Well done to me. And walks off. <laughs> yeah, well done for withstanding it all, I suppose. How long did all this last for? Hour. An hour? Bloody hell. And how did you feel then having to walk back to Stockport? Ah. <sighs> I think I felt a bit better, but by the end of it, I was so tired, I didn't feel, felt like I'd had a massage. <laughs> yeah, don't bother drying them, I've got to walk back to Stockport. <laughs> <laughs> that was heartbreaking good. as well. Then I had to put my wet socks back on, I was like, oh, wet bloody, they were drenched. Yeah. You don't have any fresh socks, do you? No. No. I've wet these. Oof. Oof. You made them wet with your holy shoe. Well, that's and I was good. thinking. So do you feel like? May, go on. Maybe I should do something every week like that, like a reviewing experience. Yeah, I think it's better than the usual shout you come out with about <laughs> ordering food. Yeah, I think so. Related experience. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what this is supposed to be. Oh, I think I should do that every week. Relate an experience I've had. Yeah, that's, that's when asking what you've been doing this week. That's normally what that means. Never mind what I've been doing. I've been un doing uninteresting work alone where nothing fun happens. Yeah. Every week you should do something that scares you or something new. We'll call it, we'll call it Tommy Laurie's Cultural Review. Each week out of the Potter Vision uh, Patreon fund, we'll take £50 and it'll go to uh, hang on, me what, having... Uh, hang on, what do you mean out of the Patreon fund, Tommy Laurie's Cultural Review? This is what the expenses should go towards. Well then I'm going to do Lucas Kirby's Cultural Review. Take you have your bloody the... review. No, 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 no. There ain't enough money for that. Oh. You can tell us about your new job, stuff like that. What if I want to be stretched? No. Oh, I'm holding my shoe like you. No, 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 no. no. You're a busy All man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got stuff Thank to you. do. I oh. had a scary experience yesterday. Oh yeah, tell me more about um, Martina's in the bathroom with doing bits and bobs. And Martina goes, Lucas, come in here. There's an enormous spider in the bathroom. Right? Mm -hmm. So I come in and I don't know what it is about Germany, but the spiders are next level to the UK. They're twice, three times as big. And the bloody scary, right? This one is it, enormous. Mm. Yeah. This one is enormous, right? And um, 
I go right. Because little spiders I can squash and get rid of, but a big one, I don't like it. I have to use a hoover or something like that. So I go and get the hoover, come back, and it's disappeared. It's not yeah. there anymore. And it's enormous, right? And I'm like, right, we'll have to find it. Because Martina wanted to go in the bath and she was like, I won't be able to relax until I know that spider's gone. So I'm looking for it. And she goes, hey, maybe it's that Nosferatu spider that's in Germany now. I turned to her, I said, Martina, what is a Nosferatu spider? She's like, oh, it's mm. that new poisonous spider that's now in every county in Germany. I'm like, why have you not told me about the Nosferatu spider? Nosferatu is that horrible bald bloke that looks like Crystal Maze with the, with the horrible nose and the ears. Yeah, he's and a apparently this, he's a vampire. That's it, he's a vampire. But it's supposed to be that this poisonous spider bloke. that's in think... The first thing about Nosferatu is not that he's bold, it's that he's a vampire. <laughs> Nosferatu is that horrible, bold bloke. That could be any man in Britain. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, right, so now I'm looking for a Nos... Not just a spider, a Nosferatu spider. Right. And um, I'm looking. And do you know where it was hiding? Hmm. It was hiding under a layer of kitchen roll in the roll. So there was a kitchen roll like that, and then the last bit of tissue, it was inside it. And I'm like, well, I don't know if this is the Nosferatu spider. I had to go outside and very carefully unravel the roll and then let it roam free to, I don't know, lay eggs or something. You should have killed it. It's, I, yeah, I know. I wanted to. I tried squishing the paper a bit, but it kept running up and down the paper. I couldn't get it, and it was scaring me. I'll just set the paper alight. <laughs> I just burnt it. There's only one way to kill yeah. vampires, and that's a fire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I should have chucked a bit of garlic at it or something. Get rid of it that way. Oof. Why call it the Nosferatu spider? Horrible! Don't be naming things after horrible mythical creatures. It's the mm. Mr. Hyde spider. Mm. Scary. Mr. Hyde spider. Sometimes it beats you up. Yeah! Oh, you bastard! Oof! Why did you do that? Mm. <laughs> Yeah, so very scary, the old nos... But yeah, in general, the bugs... Um, I think it's because it's hot in the summer as well. But I've got so many um, bites on me from mosquitoes, it's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's Germany. Slightly different you, to the UK. Can you stop making yourself so delicious to mosquitoes? Oh, no. How do I do that? Hmm. Rub garlic on you. That's right, I'll rub garlic on me, that'll be good. Because <laughs> that'll get rid of the mosquitoes and the Nosferatu spider. Mm. It all makes sense. It all So are you ready makes... for your... Sense? Are you ready for your walk now? I don't think you told the main listeners that you're about to go on a big uh, adventure. Yes. I might be back by the time this is out, but yes, I... Uh... I'm due to, uh, I'm going on a big walk and we're going to, me and Lucy are going to walk the West Highland Way. Yeah, I'm going to camp, so hopefully it went well. Uh, you'll find out in a week if it did. Hmm. I look forward to hearing all about it. Yeah, I'll Very have 50 good. quid towards that, please. Well, I'll take it out of the patron funds with the rest of the money you're going to be withdrawing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, said so you 50, my... I said you could have £50 for a massage. What's this extra 30 quid you needed? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Look, it was a cultural experience. Yeah, not like that, you filthy hound. Oh, video podcast watchers. 
will have got something a bit sorted there. So, go oh. over to the YouTube to see Tom do something crude. Oh, it's funny, I went to London yesterday and um, I'm uh, Here he train. comes out with it. You're what? supposed to have one cultural experience a week. You can't have a time <laughs> massage and London in one week. That's not allowed. <laughs> so I uh, I went to London yesterday. I'm late for the train and I'm running up the steps to yeah. the train. <laughs> and then I see train delayed four minutes. And I'm like, oh, oh. brilliant. So I'm looking at the four minutes. I've got four minutes now. Yeah. And I think, oh, I'm going to Starbucks, get a coffee. And right, you're mad. <laughs> <laughs> Four minutes, he's going to Starbucks. Oh, I think I'll have a look round Waterstones in that time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to Starbucks, and I'm uh, yeah, and I'm queuing, and the line is taking ages, and I'm annoyed at everyone in the line. I'm like, come on, I've got, I've got to get a train in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and You've so, only just joined the queue, I know. <laughs> and so I get to the front. I get to the front. I'm ordering quick. I'm like, Americano, hot milk. Yeah, take out. Yeah. And the guy's like, can I get a name for the uh, cup? And I'm like, Tom. And he goes, oh, my name's Tom as well. A lot of Tom's in today. Isn't that fun? I was like, not really. Um, and then so I pay for it. I wait for it. I get the coffee. And I'm like, brilliant. Run out to the platform. It's the train is delayed three more minutes, and then I'm like, genuinely, I'm like this. Oh, for fuck's sake! When will this train come? <laughs> <laughs> so then I went for a cake. <laughs> I'm waiting for a cake. Oh, come on! <laughs> By the time the train arrived, I've had a three-course dinner. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that's the other thing, you relaying your stories. You go on all these trips and you only ever tell me about the train journey. <laughs> uh, what do you want to know? I went to, I went to Venice. And God, this woman on the train was a right knob. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. Glad you had an after time in Venice. That's the fun stuff. That's the bloody fun stuff. Hey, I'm about to go to Venice in uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh, I'm excited. Are you going to kill anyone? Ah, well, I, I'm contracted to by Lorenzo. He keeps telling me to uh, take people out. <laughs> I can't let Lorenzo down. <laughs> I'm contracted to by Lorenzo. And it's Lorenzo who wants me to do this, just so you know. All right. It was Lorenzo, Your Honour. Well, well, you stuck the knife in, Ezio. Oh, sorry. Do you want to see yeah. a panda? I'd love to. Hey, and it's uh, clinging on to a piece of bamboo, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> now, Tom. Oh, you show me we'll something see, else we'll first. See a USB, we'll see a USB stick. Oh, I like the way it went up and down. Yeah. Hey, we got anything else? Do you want to see Bart Simpson's skeleton? I have seen that, but show the listeners. Hey, that used to be in your car, didn't it? Yeah, I was thinking of putting some aftershave on that, putting that back in my car. Yeah, get your money's worth. Get your money's worth out of that Bart Simpson skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to throw it away. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, it'll be better than the usual shit you come out with. All right, bloody hell. <laughs> Go on. What have you got for me? I think I could get another year out of this Zoidberg fridge magnet and just spray it with a bit of aftershave. <laughs> sure. 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 Now, Tom, are you cool. ready for a chapter 14, book 6 rundown? Yeah, go on then. Alright. Ron's in a right mood because Harry revealed that. Two years ago, Hermione snogged Victor Crumb. And I don't know how he mm. didn't know that, but now he's annoyed about it and he's got the ump. And he's not playing very well in Quidditch. And he's letting in all the goals in practice. And he's like, well, if I lose the game, I'm never playing again. Right. 
So uh, it comes to the main hall, and Harry's got a little drink, and it looks like he's pouring something into Ron's pumpkin juice. And Hermione says, hey, what were you pouring in there? And Harry's like, nothing. But Ron thinks it's that Felix Felicis thing, that lucky potion. Anyway, it comes to the Quidditch game, and Ron's saving everything. Yeah, he's like Gwen on Jones, saving all the, <laughs> all the goals. And then at the end, it turns out that Harry didn't actually pour it in. It was, uh, what do you call it? When you take a tablet that doesn't do anything, but you think it does. Placebo. Placebo. He did a placebo on Ron. And because uh, Ron was feeling confident, that's why he played so well. But then he gets in a hunt with Hermione. Snogs Lavender Brown. Then Hermione gets annoyed that he's snogged Lavender Brown. Ginny snogs Dean Thomas. There's a lot of snogging involved. And that was Felix Felicis. Felix what a chapter. Felicis. What a bloody chapter. I really enjoyed this chapter. A weird mist had returned over Hogwarts. They're in Herbology. Harry has told Ron and Hermione all about his little journey into Voldemort's past. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And they're wondering, you know, uh, how useful is this? Good, isn't it? They're wondering how useful it is. And uh, <clears throat> I don't really care at this point. I think if I was Harry, it's just like, well, I just think it's uh, very interesting. And also you could embarrass him, couldn't you? Or like freak him out, knowing stuff about his past. It's obviously mm. all good stuff. <laughs> This weird mist you mentioned, they've mentioned this a few times, and I'm, do you think it has significance, this strange mist over Hogwarts? I don't know, I, I also seem to remember that the um, Half-Blood Prince film is very misty. There's a lot of mist over Hogwarts, oh. it seems like a very, I don't know if they've added mist or whatever. Well, because normally it's like, you know... Uh, Pathetic fallacy where, you know, it's raining if you're sad or it's sunny if you're happy. But then this weird mist seems a bit more significant than that. Well, keep an eye on the weird mist, All right, everybody? Hmm. Hermione is enjoying Slughorn's parties. And who turned up with the, the latest one? But none other than famous Quidditch player Gwenog Jones. Right. As an adult, you shouldn't be going to these parties, <laughs> I think. You get the phone call, hello, Gwen Rock. hello. It's your old teacher here, from school. Yeah, remember <laughs> I used to teach it, yeah, all right. I've got a party this Friday. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, who else is going? Is it like a school reunion, all my old school friends? No, no, these are new school friends that are in school now. He's a new school friend. Children. School friends of my... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, all right. And where's it taking place? It's in school. You have to come back to school. Oh. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Come in. It's nothing about that it sounds good to me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll come. I wonder if he's had to blackmail him. I don't want to go to that. Um, well, I will uh, tell everyone about you. Um, you littering on the M6. I'm not bothered about that. <laughs> Oof, uh, all right, then I'll tell them about you. Uh, your Funko Pop collection. All right, I'll be there. Funko Pop, Funko. Have you, have you got a Funko Pop? Someone, at, someone gifted me a Voldemort Funko Pop. Uh, but I've never bought one myself, no. But somewhere there's a Voldemort one. Mm. Well, mm. My, my dad's got two Pet Shop Boys Funko Pops. I bet he likes them. Oh, he does. They've got pride of place in the uh, little office. Now, this chapter is flooded with arguments, yeah? 
Yeah, it's completely different. Like the last chapter was like sinister, like uh, you know, The Exorcist or something. This chapter's uh, like Biker Grove. It's just about like teenage drama. It's full of arguments, but the arguments seem to be centred on one thing, don't they? Snugging. Snugging? And yeah. I wonder if they changed it for like, America. They changed Philosopher's Stone to Sorcerer's Stone. Did they change snogging for making out or uh, smooching or l tongue lapping? I don't know if they say tongue. Do you say tongue lapping in America? Do you say tongue lapping? It's and maybe smoochy wooches. And I don't know how to feel about all this snogging chat as like, I don't know, an adult man I'm reading about teenagers snogging. Yeah, well, the thing is, you're not supposed to be reading this book, are you? It's supposed to be a teenager reading this. It's not for you, and it's not for Sibyl me. Siblings arguing over snogging. Ron is furious at Ginny for snogging Dean Thomas. Is that something yeah. sh siblings should be commenting on? Who their other siblings are snogging? I know, it's not right, is it? I think the Weasleys are a bit too familiar with each other, full stop. <laughs> I know the family, but I think they've lived too much in close quarters where they can talk about private things. But, yeah, it says, later on it goes, Ron's aggression did not wane in three days. Oh, was someone kissing his sister? What's going on the, with these lads? It makes you question. <laughs> was Molly's maiden name also Weasley? Oh, you're thinking they might be uh, inbred? Mm. No, I'm just a mm. joke. Oh, right, sorry. Well, it's just a story, isn't it? But, who knows? <laughs> well, yeah, it's weird to be going on about it. And I don't know why Ron's... Because Ron knew that Hermione liked Victor Crumb and they went to the ball together. So why is he bothered that two years ago they had a snog? Because he's not about that as well. It's hard to feel sorry for Harry as well, because he's, he's not able to sleep. Yeah, and he's like, Harry, yeah. over the events of today, thinking about Ginny snogging someone, he could barely, he was tossing and turning in his four-poster bed. It's hard to feel sorry for someone when they're sleeping in a four-poster, I think. Yeah. <laughs> As the elves tidied up his underpants around him, Harry was feeling sad. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Oh, Dobby, can you just close the curtains on my four-poster bed? I don't feel like talking to anyone today. As, okay. As Ron bathed himself in the Gryffindor Prefect's washroom with the massive jacuzzi the size of a swimming pool, a te single tear fell from his eye. Not really bothered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one bothered about was... you a lot. No wonder he never wants to go back to the Dursleys. They're spoiling him there. Oh, I'm, I'll stay here for Christmas. Yeah, he's sleeping in a four-poster. Do you want to go to the uh, Dursleys for Christmas? <laughs> no. I live in a castle. <laughs> Can you believe they've only got a single bed for me? Yeah, that's, that's, that's what normal people sleep on. That's what normal children <laughs> sleep on, a single bed. Is it? <laughs> Hey, I don't know if you like the new character that was introduced in this chapter. Harry's monster. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It turns out that there is a monster that's been born inside of Harry that gets angry when he sees Ginny kissing somebody. And when Harry thinks about kissing Ginny himself, the monster purrs. Mm. What the fuck? I didn't mm -hmm. like reading about that. It's like, uh, is that his... That is sex drive. What? What is? What are we referring to here? It was horrible. <laughs> He's got these primal <laughs> urges. How is like Mr. Doctor Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, isn't it? He is. One or the other. When he sees when he sees children younger than him kissing. Also, he's like, oh, I shouldn't be thinking about Ron's sister. She's out of bounds. Well, that and she's younger than you, pal. 
Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, she seems to have changed in this chapter. Suddenly she's got like a feisty personality that I don't think we've ever seen before. Like, she has a right go at Ron and she's very witty with him, I think, taking the piss out of him. And then later mm. on, she purposely crashes into uh, into the Quidditch commentator. So she's turning into a bit of a rebel. You know, I didn't understand what was going on. I thought she was crashing into the commentator's tower. Because, like, in the films, they would commentate from the tower, don't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. And so I was like... Gryffindor win! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, something's just crashed into the commentator's tower. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah, it's nice to see Ginny out, because she hasn't had much to do for about three books. And now Harry's interested in her. And, uh, yeah, she's shown a bit more of her personality. Mm. Uh, now, Hermione comes into the Great Hall and she catches Harry putting something into Ron's drink. Harry, are you... <laughs> trying to... Ron? <laughs> no, 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 not that. Oh. Thank God. I want him to feel crime. good. Harry, no. No. <laughs> no. no, no, no. No, no. This, he needs a cold shower. Right, spiking drinks. What is going on at this school? What a twist in the chapter. Last chapter, he's seen Voldemort openly admit to Dumbledore that he kills animals. And now he's gone. Oh, Dumbledore forgave him. He'll forgive me for this. No, 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 that's not what you take from what I was showing you. Oh, we, I thought you were showing me that because you were trying to encourage me to be a bad boy. No, 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 that's not what I was showing you. Yeah, and look, my forgiveness is what you should... You shouldn't base all your moral judgments on my forgiveness. I'm just your teacher. There's <laughs> laws that mean you can't do stuff like that. It's nothing to do with me and what I think. No. <laughs> But Harry has, sometimes Harry comes out with stuff that a teenager would never say. Like Hermione accuses him. She's like, Harry, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to spike his drink. And Harry says, and I quote, Hark, who's talking? <laughs> Hark? Who does he think he is? The angel Gabriel? Hark, <laughs> who's talking? <laughs> Follow the northern star. Design, design. <laughs> See, welcome you've got Mark the parents, Harry. It was an immaculate conception. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. There's nothing immaculate about that. I was there. Oh! <laughs> Who's that? Who's that speaking to him? Hagrid. <laughs> Hagrid was there enjoying Harry's conception. <laughs> well, someone's got to hold the camera. Oh! Disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> yeah. So it comes to the Quidditch match and uh, Harry cheats to win. The Seeker, <laughs> who's filling in for Malfoy, Harper, he's racing for the snitch and Harry trash talks him to distract him and then he gets <laughs> the snitch. It's <laughs> not very nice, is it? <clears throat> it's not very nice. Yeah. And it turns out at the end that Harry only pretended to spy Ron. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? A fun little prank. Pretending to spy his drink. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> Don't do that one in the club, lads. Don't do that one in the club. Relax, it was a splendour. No, 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 no. Relax, it was a tic tac. No, 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 no. Relax, it was a smint. No, 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 no. What a smint. <laughs> sometimes yeah, I worry that. that people... Yeah. Sometimes I worry that people offer you a smint or a mint because you have bad breath. They're like, oh, I'm going to have a mint. Do you want one? And you're like, is this a signal that I have bad breath? Yeah. Mm. Who thought that? Yeah, hey, I get that. Like, uh, sometimes someone... One time one, someone came up to me and they went, brush your teeth! And I went, oh, does that mean I've got 
bad breath. Mm. No. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. It couldn't mean that. It couldn't mean that. Um, another time, uh, someone came up with a, uh, a, <laughs> a pack of Andrex bottom wipes and they said, I think you need these. And I was like, do you think I've got a dirty bottom? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Am I thinking too much into this? Yeah. <laughs> I'm an overthinker. I'm an overthinker. I saw Inside Out too recently. I've got anxiety. I'm over to thinking. No, oh, no, you're not wiping your ass, son. You ain't wiping. Your ass. <laughs> no, no, I'm an overthinker. Look, I'm an overthinker. Look, I've seen Inside Out. Too. It's not about Inside Out too. You've got a shitty ass. Right, you need to wipe it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <gasps> what does this tell me about what, all the emotions in my head? Is this something to do with joy? No, 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 no. no. It's not anxiety or joy. Right. Yeah. It should be shame. You need shame in your head. <laughs> Uh, I've not got enough of it. <laughs> Dirty bum. Oh. Oh. Maybe that'll come up in Inside Out 3. Just wipe your arse. Don't wait for Inside Out 3. Christ. God almighty boy. <laughs> Can't say it any clearer. Try to be polite with a wet wipe. <laughs> That's why we're doing this podcast long distance. I'm sick oh. of it. Yeah, and then Hermione gets upset because Ron snogs Lavender Brown. And you got to watch. You got to watch. Before you go on to that, you got to watch Adam Sandler's new stand-up special. Hello. No, it's called Simple Hello. It's called I Love You. <laughs> On um, yeah, it's called I Love You on Netflix, and it is so funny. Is it? Is it good? It's really funny. He goes, um, yeah. He's talking to this guy at an airport, and then he, uh, the guy comes out of the bathroom, and he goes, "Oh, I feel amazing." He goes, "I just had a dump," and he goes, "And I had a no wiper," and Adam Sandler's like. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You should have wiped once to, sh you know, to show that, like, you know, there was nothing yeah. back there. And he's like, no, 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 you can tell. Sometimes you can just tell. Yeah. yeah. And then Adam Sandler advises him. He goes, you need to, like, you know, go check. He's like, you need to go check, like, have a wipe, you yeah. know. And then yeah. I think he comes back out. I'm butchering this a bit. He comes back out and he goes to Adam Sandler, you were right. He goes, it was everywhere. <laughs> He goes, <laughs> all over my ass, it was all over my thighs and knees. And my <laughs> Coming out so confident, it was no wonder. <laughs> that sounds like it's worth a Netflix subscription alone, just for that routine. <laughs> and also, I've butchered that. To actually hear him do it is phenomenal. Yeah, very good. I've, I've never seen him do stand up. I didn't know he did it. Well, he does it. You'd like it because he mixes. He does a bit of stand up, then he plays a song on his guitar for a bit. Oh, that sounds fun. And the songs sound. are good as well. Yeah, very good. But what, I might what catch that. Say? Well, I was just going to say, Hermione's upset. Her and Ron are in love with each other, we know that. Yeah, and Ron's frustrated, so he's gone off with Lavender Brown, and Hermione's upset. And then she's in a classroom, Lavender Brown and Ron walk in, and it's all a bit awkward. And then Hermione conjures up these canaries, and then she sends them after Ron. Yeah. I don't think sending an angry flock of birds is going to... Win over his love. Mm. What do you think? It seems like a crime, that. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Well, that's my 
Final thoughts? Jerry's yeah. final thoughts. Okay then. Right. How many flock of canaries out of five are you going to give this chap to? I liked it. It was completely different to the previous chapter in tone. Um, lots of drama, social problems. Mm. It was all right, wasn't it? Bit yeah. of fun, not too much Quidditch. I'm going to give it four flocks of canaries out of five. I think there was too much Quidditch. Uh, I was like, here we go, yeah. a bit of boring Quidditch. I don't give a crap about Quidditch practice, Quidditch <laughs> game. Yeah. I'm going to throw myself in the river in a minute. But we stay oh. for the drama. Harry's tricks, the spiking, the four-poster bed chat. Yeah? I, too, can give this no less than four flocks of canaries out of five. Fantastic. Right. Are you ready for the quiz? Yes. What's the teacher called? Um, he teaches potions. Slughorn. Correct. Question two. Who does Slughorn fawn of? Cormac McLaggen. McLaggen, correct. Where in this... Um, chapter did Ron sag? Where did he sag? Into an armchair in the Corriman room. Oh, false. He sagged on his broom. Oh, he sagged on his broom. So mm -hmm. that's um, one wrong so far. What had returned over Hogwarts? The mist. Correct. And the final answer, but it's pretty Dundant anyway, because you've lost the quiz. What oh. did the masseuse reveal on me at the massage? What did she reveal on you? Yes. Oh, your ass! My ass. But unfortunately, <laughs> Mr. Kirkby, you have lost oh. the quiz. Did you ever know that you're my quiz? You are the quiz beneath my wings. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, I've had, I've had it fun of that. Thank you. Now it's time for the nation's second favourite segment. It's <sighs> Hedwig's Droppings. We're not alluding to owl poo. We're not alluding to plopings. We mean the messages you send in when we refer to all Hedwig's darpings. What's in a beat this week? Well, we've had loads of lovely messages from people this week. And the first one is a message from Karina Gallagher, who we know Karina. I think she's come to see us a few times and she's a patron. Mm -hmm. And uh, she sent us a message. Hello, Pottervision boys. I went to the Edinburgh Fringe last week and was gutted you weren't there this year, but I saw Tom's stand-up, which was hilarious. Me and my boyfriend keep laughing at the tossing and turning joke. Whee! <laughs> Anyways, keep up the good work. I always look forward to the new episode of the podcast and I listen to it on the Monday morning before work. Fantastic. Hell Thank yeah. you so much, Karina. We've had another email from Leonor Grimart. And Leonor says, Hey guys, I'm going back to school on Monday, year 11, not year 7. And I was wondering what your back to school routine were as children and what Lucas's is like now. Tom, talk me through it. What, is your, what was your back to school routine in the summer holidays? Get the uniform ready, get the backpack ready, give your teeth a brush and go to bed. <laughs> well, it's funny you should ask that, Leonor, because my mum gave me the very sad news that Boppers in Colwyn Bay is closing down. And Boppers was the one-stop shop for all of your school uniform needs. Whatever school you went to in North Wales, Boppers had what you needed and I'm talking not just school uniform but PE kits and stuff so in the summer I'd always go to boppers and there'd be uh, 
A trip to WH Smith, get myself some new sharp pencils. None of these, I hate the pencils that you have to sharpen yourself. You know the pencils that are flat at the end? And it's like, well, mm. you've got to sharpen it now. Hell yeah. Can someone at the factory sharpen it? Yeah? I want them sharp, ready to go. Some pencils, some pens, some new exercise books. And I remember at our school, you had to cover your exercise books with like a sleeve or something like that. You couldn't just leave it blank, you had to protect it. And uh, lots of people used to like wallpaper it with, with something, but I used to buy these plastic, these plastic sleeves that I could just slip in and then I'm done. Mm. Was, that, was that interesting, Leonor? I, I hope so. <laughs> that was me back to school routine. Thank you so much for, uh, um, well, I don't have a back to school routine now because I've got a different job. Now, we've had a lovely message from Laura Harriet. Now, Laura says, hello, I just wanted to write in as my partner and I have just started listening to Pottervision over the past few weeks and have reached the halfway point. We're loving your show so much and listen to it over lunch together. Oh, that's nice. Pretty much every day. The only thing is that we aren't listening in real time. I don't want to skip ahead because I feel like it would be wrong. What if there were new inside jokes that we wouldn't get? What if the mould problem... I was asking you to skip ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you watch it in order. Yeah, what if the mould problem manifests itself into a bigger or even better DIY problem that we won't comprehend? Mm. What if Poppy burns Lucas's kitchen down? Oh, we've got some bad news about Poppy coming up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what if Tom starts a love affair with the lady in the snakeskin boots? I don't remember the lady in snakeskin boots. She, um, it's not worth it. Go on. She crashed in, she crashed, I accused her of crashing into my car. And she wore snakeskin oh. boots. <laughs> that was a snakeskin But Can you tell us her name now you don't work there anymore? Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> Yvonne. Yvonne, I scratch your car. Right. Um, yeah, so they've done some maths. In order to catch up, they'd have to take five days off work and listen for 24 hours. Is that advisable? What do you think, Tom? Should they take the time or listen in all... One fell swoop. Mm, well, they're not going to listen to this anyway, so it doesn't matter. You don't think they're going to get this far? Yeah, but they would have caught up by then. Oh, then they've already done it, haven't they? Yeah, all yeah. right, then. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for listening, Laura, and uh, your partner. So, and our final message this week is an email from Daniel Moz Morris. Mm. Now, Daniel, or Moz says, hello, lovely Pottervision boys. I recently discovered Tom through some quality Instagram content. Spaghetti and meatballs, big banana. And I was thrilled to find hundreds of hours of podcast content to look forward to. I work from home, so it's very nice to have the company of you two silly lads. I'm currently on book two, so I hope to hear this message sometime next year. Big love, Moz. Thank you so much, Moz, for listening. Lovely to have us. a... Let us know if I you get this far, this Moz. Moz. Because, let me tell you this. I worry that yeah. some people do that. They send like little messages. They go, oh, I'm 20 episodes in. Read this out on the pod. And then they just give up on the pod. They're like, ah, whatever. I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and they never reading. hear it. Mm. It's like writing a birthday card and shoving it in the bin. Mm. But hopefully you're there listening, Moz. Now mm. we've got some new Patreons to welcome as always. And the first one is a baby Harry named Lula. Lula, you are a baby at an orphanage. You are handed a bowl of gruel. Everyone is drawing, you've eaten all your gruel and everyone's drawing straws. Who will ask for more? Lula, you will ask for more. You go up to the orphanage master, who for some reason is dressed like a captain, and you say, yeah. I'd like more, please. More? Yes, more. I'm hungry. I'm a baby. I'm growing. 
throw him down and feed him on cockroaches served in a canister. Okay, if that's how you're going to be. Lula, you grab the big vat of boiling hot gruel and you dump it onto the orphanage master. Yeah! Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. He cooks alive and he dies. Everyone rejoices. Yippee! They hold you up one by one and mwah, 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 mwah. welcome. Welcome, Lula. Now we've got another baby Harry to welcome and it's Stefan Fairburn. Stefan Fairburn, you are an arcade. Uh, playing on Pac-Man. Oh, they're gaining in on you. <laughs> Pac-Man. Um, mind if I play stranger? Says a man next to you. You've already said it. Mind if I play stranger? <laughs> Look Save me lines man, for me. <laughs> you look over this man and you go, okay, there's two joysticks, so why not? You start playing together, yeah. but all of a sudden this man, he starts thrashing you and you begin to feel helpless. So you do the only thing you can think to do. You take yeah. out a little dagger and you stab him in his stomach. Yeah! <laughs> oh! Didn't know you were going to do that. <laughs> Everyone in the arcade rejoices. They start laughing and clapping. They pick you up and ma 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 ma. Thank you very much and welcome, Stefan Fairburn. Now we've got another baby Harry, and this is Seaned Lewis or Seaned Lewis, if it's uh, a Welsh pronunciation. Seaned. 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 You, Seaned are uh, taking a ride in a helicopter. Wee, I can see all the sights of Plandudno. Wee, look, there's that downhill toboggan. Wee, there's Lucas's mum's house. Wee, there's Wilkinson's. Wee, there's an old people's home. Wee. <laughs> 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 there's a car parked in front of parked on the same street that Lucas's mum and dad call and for some reason they think they should call the police over it Wee! <laughs> all of a sudden in this helicopter it starts to rock and you're like uh, excuse me babe. you say to the helicopter pilot are you qualified to do this job well, of course I'm qualified. I, uh, I traded Anglesey. There is no helicopter training point in Anglesey. Who are you? All right. I'm Sharon Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sharon Osborne. You do Who the would do thing. that, Ozzy? <laughs> Who would do that, Ozzy? You do the only thing you can think to do. You cover shine Sharon's eyes. Oh, who would do that? The helicopter. Oh, I'm going to crash the helicopter. Rocking back and forth. Whoa, whoa. Just before it hits the floor, you tumble out and land on one of them downhill toboggans. Whee! You look up at the... um. Helicopter with Sharon still inside and it crashes. Pow! Up in flames. At the bottom of the hill, you're picked up by the toboggan master and mwah, 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 mwah. welcome. Welcome, Seaned. Now, our next patron, we've got a baby. That's Hermione. all we've got time for today. <laughs> I've got nothing else to do. All right, then, more next time on Potter Vision. This has been the Potter Vision Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. As always, we've got lots of bonus episodes on the, on the Patreon. And recently we've done Rapunzel. 
from Wolves, Witches and Giants, narrated by Spike Milligan. We had a great bloody laugh talking about the Wicked Witch and uh, all the other things that were going on there. <laughs> it's a bloody good laugh. Next time, we'll be on episode 150. Ooh. Chapter 15 of book six, The Unbreakable Thou. You have been a wet-footed Tom Lawrenson. And you have been the cupboard-making Lucas Kirkby. Goodbye. Hello, listeners. Now I'm going to read out a fan fiction that was sent to us uh, by an email. Uh, one of those modern contraptions. Uh, and it's uh, yeah, a, a fan fiction about the Pottervision boys. Feels a bit odd to read it. But it's anonymous. I can't give credit. <clears throat> I'm just going to read it. I hope that's okay. Chapter One. The Boys Who Lived. The Pottervision boys were proud to say they were perfectly normal, thank you very much. Or at least that's what they were trying to explain to the network rail employee, giving them a rather unamused look over the ticket barrier at King's Cross Station. We run a Harry Potter parody podcast, you see, Lucas explained. We want to film a sketch on Platform 9 before 11 so that we can go live on our TikTok account at 11 when the Hogwarts Express leaves. The man's expression remained unamused. Think you're being funny, do you? You can't get on a train, fictional or otherwise, without a damn ticket. No, you don't understand, Lucas went on. We don't want to get on a train. We want to film a video on the platform. The balding man, clearly considering himself, paid too little to deal with the antics of two grown men wearing Harry Potter costumes and quickly running out of the little patience he'd begun his shift with, replied unimpressed. I don't care if you're Steven Spielberg himself. Without a ticket or filming permit, you're not coming through. Come on, mate, let's leave it, Tom resigned, pulling on Lucas's shoulder lightly. Backing down, Lucas gave the attendant a disdainful glance before bending down to grab the handle of the large wheeled holdall full of Pottervision props. A tuft of neon ginger wig had been zipped through in haste and crowded the top of the case. What a miserable seaward, Tom declared as they idled their way toward the small waitrose in the station. Well, well, I'm not sure I would go that far, Lucas countered, their linguistic differences emerging. Perhaps we could buy a cheap one-stop ticket and use it to get on the platform. A cheap ticket? In this economy? It'll be about a million pounds. Tom gave a sigh of great exasperation. The station was growing busier. The rush hour commuters were dwindling as the clock moved further from typical office hours. However, this was a day like no other in King's Cross Station. People in black robes and round-rimmed glasses were slowly replacing the typical travellers. It was September 1st and Harry Potter fans were descending upon the site to hear the annual announcement that the Hogwarts Express had departed. We could film the sketch using the in-the-wall statue, Lucas suggested, but Tom was unimpressed. The whole point of the sketch is that we accidentally end up on an LNER service heading north. It wouldn't work. Hmm, we could adapt it somehow. Even if we did, we'd never get it filmed before 11, not with those cues. Tom nodded his head towards the robed people queuing for the golden trolley embedded in the wall of the concourse. Tom pursed his thin lips. Then a mischievous twinkle developed in his eye. What if we snuck in behind some people using the suitcase gate? Oh, I don't know about that, Lucas hesitated. Come on, Tom rumbled. Look, they're all preoccupied watching these weirdos in cloaks. And if we get caught, we'll just say we got confused. Some coaxing later, Tom had convinced Lucas to infiltrate a group of people with suitcases watching the departure boards by Platform 9. The Pottervision boys loitered, 
tucking up the ends of their cloaks to look more like jackets. Tom slid his round framed glasses on top of his hair. One of the unsuspecting people, a tour group from what Lucas could discern, was looking between a train ticket on his phone and the departure boards. Side-eyeing the older man's greatly zoomed screen, Lucas made out the details of his booking. 1027 Peterborough. Looking back to the departure board, he coolly noted the platform had not been announced. He caught Tom's eye and did a sly eye hint towards the man's phone. Tom looked at him vacantly before narrowing his eyebrows and mouthing, What? Lucas tried again to hint towards the man's phone, but eventually gave up, unsure whether Tom was just playing it up. A chime rang out to signal the beginning of an announcement. A robotic female voice rang out. The 1027 service to Peterborough will depart from platform 9. Lucas raised his eyebrows at Tom as they mingled with the unsuspecting group of people and sidled to the gate. With some suspicious manoeuvring and walking uncomfortably close to the people in front of them, Tom managed to sneak through to the platform, followed shortly by Lucas. Their large prop-filled bag lay abandoned by the oval seating nearby. The boys walked somewhat down the platform before untucking their robes. Lucas propped his phone by one of the structural pillars that stood along the length of the platform, angling it upwards to try and get enough of a scene in the frame. Right, from the top, he announced. Taking their marks, Tom and Lucas pulled out a makeshift wand from each of their jean pockets. They had scoured them in a park earlier that week. Lucas's was long and somewhat flexible, with the remnants of leaf nodes along its tip. Tom's was shorter, stockier, chosen for the nub sticking out which made it look like the wand had an erection. The boys began to enact the duel they'd planned, throwing in rogue spells and, more concerningly, some illegal spells. It was after a too enthusiastic from Tom that a loud, sharp oi rang from the end of the platform. Turning, they saw the miserable attendant who had denied them entry. The Potter Vision boys froze. Looking across to each other, their eyes both said the same thing. Let's skedaddle. Tom began to run for the barrier and Lucas began to follow him. However, Lucas quickly came to his senses and looked back. Their camera equipment. It sat against one of the pillars along the platform. He stopped, adjusted his feet and ran back. The camera equipment, he shouted, turning his head over his shoulder to catch Tom's attention. Tom stopped and looked back. Lucas was nearly at the equipment. He smiled to himself. There was no point running back to help when Lucas was nearly there. Lucas, arriving at their equipment, began to bend over to scoop it together. Momentum was not on his side, however, as he began to topple forward. He braced himself for the impact his forehead was about to receive from the brick in front of him. Lucas was confused when his knees and hands hit the ground, devoid of any of their Potter Vision equipment, and his face remained brick-free. A high-pitched, hollow-sounding whistle sounded to his left. Opening one eye, he saw the smoke milling from the train next to him. This was not the most noticeable aspect of the scene before him, however. No, that was the cherry red steam engine, proudly billowing steam on the rails. And the boys and girls in black robes sorted about the platform. So, so thank you very much to the anonymous person that wrote that. That was bloody great. And uh, I hope I read it all right. Yeah, so thank you so much.